Hello, this is Mike, and welcome to PHP Programming Video 61, and we're continuing our work with the Facebook Flash Builder application, and today we're actually going to build a Photoshop uh, background and going to program it so it runs as the background in Flash Builder. Now, if there is a photo programming software that you should learn, it's actually Photoshop, and there's two reasons for that. One, Photoshop just makes it so easy, but the other is is that it now is working with 3D. So you can actually bring uh, 3D objects in from Cinema 4D, for example, and shade them, and it's just pretty fantastic. Uh, with Photoshop in that third dimension, it really does supersede some of the free software out there. Now, if you don't have the money for Photoshop, use GIMP. It's a great free software, and I've actually used it and have several tutorials on YouTube on how to do that. Let's take a look at some of the images we're going to be using. Uh, I do have a little clipboard of images here, uh, a pieces folder, and in that folder I have a number of images where I can use to put together this little... Uh, Photoshop image. This particular cityscape comes from uh, Pixel Active Cityscape. So if you actually want to build some 3D animated cityscape uh, backgrounds and uh, get those running in some program you might have, you can actually do that with that particular software. I also have a little holly deck that we'll be using for this as well. I put all that together from the web and scraped it together. So actually, let's open up Photoshop and do a little bit of work. So we have Photoshop open, and I just want to let you know this is kind of a 101 crash course into Photoshop. You could easily do a 20, 30, 40 video series on Photoshop and still have so much more to do. It is very rich, and uh, first thing we're going to do is just open up a new file. So go File, New, and we'll just call this uh, Background. And uh, typically in... Uh, Facebook, you're going to be dealing with a 700 square pixel size. I'll just make this 700 by 500. And we'll hit OK. And there's our canvas. Let's go ahead and open up our Layers panel. And that's F7 if you don't see it, so F7 to bring it up. And there's my Layers panel, which I'll use quite a bit. So let's get rid of this background, just drag down here and make a copy of it, and then go ahead and throw that into the trash can. The first thing I want to do is basically just place an image. So I'll go File, Place. And we'll start with uh, the Pieces folder. And we'll just start with our little uh, city piece. And I'm going to just, you know, not be real accurate here. Just going to bring it over and we're going to make you basically let this take up about half the screen. There we go. And with that done, I actually want to get rid of some of this background right here. I hit my Layers panel again, F7 key. Uh, I can just get rid of this uh, right here. And you can see it's transparent on the other side. Now what I want to do is actually get rid of this uh, background. Now there's many ways to do that. So in this Layers panel, I'm just going to right-click on here and make sure the layer is rasterized so I can do some work on it. And just grab your magic wand right here, and we're just going to get rid of this background. Got to get rid of most of it, not all of it. We'll bring our eraser tool in next. Now there's other ways to do this, but once again, I'm doing this very fast. A lot of designers like to use the uh, other one, the uh, Quick Select uh, tool that works very well as well. As well. And uh, see, I used a quick select there and actually got rid of some of those clouds. Uh, I'm going to bring out my eraser tool now and show you a little trick here. I got my eraser out. I'm actually going to use that to get rid of some things. And using my eraser, what I'm actually going to do is erase these, some of these clouds. Now, if you use the bracket tools, you can actually... The right bracket makes your eraser larger. The left bracket makes it smaller. So do you do that to control things and just to kind of erase things that are in the way here. And we've done a pretty good job. We got most rid of most of the background. Pretty happy with that. Uh, not everything is taken care of, but we'll take care of that in a moment. So actually, that's one thing. Go ahead and get off of that. And go to your pointer, and I'm going to make another layer. So to make another layer, just grab this layer and just drag it right into the, the little uh, extra layer box there, and you got another layer. And if you hit the Control T, that'll actually give you control over that. We're actually going to just stretch that down. So just grab the handle right here and just stretch it down. And now it looks like it's a reflection. We're just going to press bring that up a little bit so it goes into that. And we're going to bring down the opacity to about 25. So it almost looks like you have a reflection right there. And once again, uh, depending on how much work you want to do, you could spend all day on something like this. We're going to do this in less than 10 minutes. So with that done, just go ahead and enter. And now actually what I want to do is I want to put a background on this. So I'm going to bring in my uh, cloudy background. So I'm going to go File, Place. And there's my cloudy background. Just hit place. And I'm going to rotate this. So you're going to hold down the shift key and that actually rotate in increments. So make sure I actually get it horizontal. And there it is. I'm going to actually stretch this out a little bit. Stretch this up. There we go. We're, making, we're doing good now. Stretch it over. Stretch it over. Let's keep stretching it down until it looks where I want it to be. That's about right. And I want to bring this. Let's go ahead and hit the enter key. And let's bring this layer down below these two. 
There we go. Now it's looking pretty cool. So I got a little white here. I don't want that white, so I'm going to get on the layer that where that is and just bring my race tree out here and just erase that. Got a little bit of the building there, sorry. Let's use our uh, left bracket key to bring it, make it a little smaller. And we'll just throw that white right there. That's pretty good. Once again, this is just a demo, so you know there's no uh, amount of time really being spent on this. Like you typically might spend a lot more time on this with an image, but we're just doing it pretty rapidly here. But it shows you the tools. Okay, so that's a nice little background, and we got a nice little reflection, so that's pretty cool. Now, what I like to do is actually put a little bit of blur across this seam right here. So I'm going to go to my blur tool right here. Good, and I'm just going to blur along this, kind of blurring that seam right there. There we go. And it's not really that perceivable, but it's actually doing a little blur there, so blurring that scene. There you go. And that scene's been kind of blurred, and, and now it looks fairly good. What I want to do now is I actually want to bring in my hologram. And so I'm going to go ahead and place that. So go Image, go to File, go Place, bring in my holly deck. There we go. I'm bringing that up right here. That's about where I want it. There we go. And we're going to actually now hit the Enter key. And we want to bring that behind everything. There we go. And I want to bring my opacity down so it actually kind of looks like it's uh, coming from a holly deck. Let's bring that down to 25. There you go. That looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. And what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to make another copy of that. So we'll bring it uh, down and drop it right here into that little folder piece. We've got a copy of it. We're going to actually hit my Control T key just to bring it down. We're going to, it looks like it's duplicated below. And we're going to hit the Enter key. There we go. It's set, and we're going to bring its opacity even further down, even more. There we go. Pretty good. Now, what I'd like to do typically is basically save all these files, but I'm going to actually just flatten them all in one image since it's just, just a demo. So I'm going to right-click and just hit Flatten. I just hit the Flatten Image button, and it basically flattens everything into a single image. I'll make another copy of that and get rid of that. And now I'm going to move my uh, recorder back into place so you can actually see that. So what I want to do now is I want to add some effects. So I'll hit this FX for effects. And I'm going to go Bevel and Emboss. And let me move this over so you can see it. And I'm going to uh, also add a little bit of satin. So let's go ahead and hit my satin. And that makes it pretty dark looking. You go, oh man, that looks terrible. But let's go to our adjustments tool. So in Windows, there's actually an adjustment. So bring that out. And I love this little, uh, basically this curve right here. You actually change this curve and make some really nice adjustments. I'll move this over so you can see this. And so I'm going to brighten this up a little bit by just moving this curve around. There you go. Look a little bit brighter. You can actually move that around a little bit. You know, and just do a little bit with the curve until it looks kind of cool. And that actually looks kind of cool. I actually like that effect. All right, we're done with our background image. Now what we're going to do is export this for the web. So I'm going to go File, Save for the web. And it's 700 by 500. And if you bring this down a little bit so you can see this, it's actually 67K. So now if you compare this with the other image, you can see the other image is somewhat lifeless. Well, this actually looks like it's got a little bit more volume in it. So I'm pretty happy with this. I'm going to go ahead and save this image right here. So let me bring this up so you can see what I'm doing. So just hit the Save button and save it in your folder. And we'll just call this City Hollow for hologram. And let's save that. And that image is saved. We're ready to dump that into Flash Builder and actually put that in as our background. So we're back in Flash Builder, and what we want to do is drag the image right into the Images folder right here. Pretty easy. So let's bring up our Images and do that. So here's our Images folder, and our Images folder is our City Hollow. There it is right there. And we're just going to drag and drop our City Hollow right into our Images folder. So just drag and drop it. And we're all good. And this is yes to all. And we have a nice City Hollow image in there. And what we're ready to do now is we're actually ready to actually paste the code in that we need actually to, in a sense, make this a background. And it's very simple. And you have to remember in Flash Builder, whatever comes first is the bottom layer. So I'm actually going to paste it here, and everything that follows will be on top of it. So just make sure you have that background uh, in front of everything else or first. And so let's go ahead and paste it. We'll get Control uh, P or Paste. And we see what we have here is basically we're using a bitmap image spark container. And we're going to give it the ID back. Use a simple at embed assets, images, and city hall of the name. And of course, we're going to have the width of 700 and the height of 500. And now when we run this program, we should see an image in the background. Or we can just go to design view and see if it appears. And there's our image. Now if we run it, let's go and run the program. 
we have our background. Now we've got a lot more work to do, but having the background image there uh, is a start. So uh, let's review what we did today. Basically, it was fairly simple. We went to Photoshop and we created a background image. Then what we did after creating that background image, we went to Source and pasted in a bitmap Spark container with the embed at embed assets image city hollow jpeg now basically what that does it grabs this jpeg embeds it so it doesn't have to load so you don't get any laps in the loading they'll automatically load at the beginning of the program so you don't sit there waiting for the image to appear which is rather annoying for users so we're on our way and next time we're actually going to work on building some states and putting some buttons into this program so thanks for listening this is mike lively i'll see you next time